previous two lectures, we considered the formal aspect of turbulence and asked the question, how does turbulence sustain itself? And we showed this process of uh, sustenance through breakdown of eddies and we explained this process in three ways. One was scale analysis, second was spectral analysis and the third was the vorticity dynamics. Now, we must turn to more predictive aspects. After all, we wish to be able to compute or calculate friction factor and Nusselt numbers in turbulent flows. So, I am going to turn today to regions of flow close to the wall. If one analyzes experimentally, then one would find an inner layer as well as an outer layer and uh, there are some special features of this inner layer, uh, which make it possible for us to determine the friction factor and Nusselt number. And I will also in show how Prandtl's mixing length idea can be employed to predict velocity distribution in inner layer. So, let us turn to uh, the main postulate. So, in our uh, formal aspect, we dealt with uh, uh, turbulent flows uh, whose structure is dominated by large eddies. Uh, that is where the production takes place and the diffusive influence of viscosity was rather small being confined only to carrying out dissipation at the smallest scales. Near the wall, however, viscosity also plays its role in bringing about diffusion and what is the size of this inner layer? Well, to begin with, let me say approximately y divided by delta in a, in a boundary layer would be of the order of 15 percent and likewise y divided by radius, uh, where y is distance from the wall in a pipe flow would again be of the order of 15 percent. So, we are talking about a fairly narrow region close to the wall about 15 percent whereas, uh, away from the wall uh, where diffusive influence of viscosity is very small would be greater than 0.15. However, it is the inner region which is of great importance to us because the greatest resistance to heat and mass transfer occurs close to the wall where uh, or in the region in which viscosity plays its dominant role. That is where the fluid flow is sluggish and uh, likewise therefore, the heat and mass transfer uh, is also very sluggish and therefore, we are very in much interested in this inner region. Now, it is of course, a very fortunate co occurrence quite an accident of nature really uh, that the most significant characteristics of this inner region are almost universal and we are going to exploit this universality of the universe inner layer to predict friction factor and Nusselt number. So, let us ask ourselves the question, what are the characteristics of this inner layer? This is the flow against a wall, this is the free stream velocity u infinity and this is the total boundary layer thickness delta, let us say. Then uh, the inner layer, which is which as I said is about 15 percent of the total itself comprises of three characteristic layers as I have shown here. The innermost layer is often called the viscous sub layer is almost laminar like, because that is where the effect of viscosity is so great that all fluctuations are almost killed and uh, you get essentially laminar flow. In reality, however, this layer is characterized by repeated but infrequent fluid bursts. What happens is the laminar sub layer here grows a little, becomes unstable and weak and at this point that lumps of fluid from the outer layer hit the inner uh, viscous sub layer 
an uproot fluid out into the uh, into the outer layer again or the outer parts of the inner layer and this kind of fluid being flung out from the sub layer is quite visible if you did flow visualization of a typical bound turbulent boundary layer. Then this region is very intermittent, but in uh, when I say uh, it is intermittent, but infrequently so. So, for all practical purposes to begin with, we might say the region is almost like laminar layer. The next is the transitional layer which we may liken to the inertial subrange that we identified during our formal aspects of turbulence and that is called the transitional layer. Now, here both turbulent fluctuations as well as fluid viscosity both are equally dominant and then there is the fully turbulent part uh, of the inner layer where essentially uh, the flow is very much like fully turbulent flow. So, as I said inner layer has three layers in laminar sub layer, transitional layer and the uh, inner turbulent layer. The outer layer of course, is definitely turbulent. Uh, so, we need not we will take up the outer layer uh, towards the end of this lecture, but presently we wish to concentrate on the inner layer because it is this part of the boundary layer that really offers significant uh, rates uh, uh, resistances to heat transfer. It is also the region in which greater part of the uh, temperature, velocity and concentration gradients take place, whereas the outer part has more or less uniform profiles. So, it is the inner layer which is of great, great importance to us. Now, phenomenologically I may postulate that the velocity parallel to the wall u would be function first of all of the fluid property, two properties being rho, the density and viscosity. Of course, u must vary with distance from the wall, therefore, y is included and uh, tau wall would determine the shear stress at the wall, uh, that is uh, the velocity gradient at the wall and therefore, uh, because tau wall is mu du dy at y equal to 0 and therefore, shear stress is also included here. And then there are many other factors that are likely to influence the velocity profile in the inner layer. Now, what are those other factors? The other factors would be the boundary layer thickness uh, itself could well influence the nature of the velocity profile. The pressure gradient and its variation in the x direction could also affect uh, velocity distribution. If there is transpiration or mass transfer, then of course, V w will also influence the velocity distribution. And finally, in heat transfer, we often uh, in order to enhance the rate of heat transfer, particularly in gases, we often in employ rough surfaces. So, even the roughness height would uh, influence the nature of the velocity profile in this. Experimental evidence, however, shows that for a smooth impermeable furnace, smooth meaning no roughness height is 0, impermeable means V w is 0, the inner layer is almost completely free of all other parameters. Now, this is very interesting that uh, uh, for V w equal to 0 and for a smooth surface, the other parameters play a very minor role and I will explain why it is so. So, for example, the independence from delta suggests that no information travels from the outer parts to the inner region. So, inner region is sort of insular region uh, The is not really affected by what happens very far outside uh, into the outer layers. Uh, independence from d p d x suggests that the inner region is, is also independent of the history of the flow except that the shear stress variation along the wall may influence a little bit the velocity profile, but uh, the influence would be expected to be not so great as far as the velocity profile is concerned. Structure of turbulence is thus presumed to be in local equilibrium, that is the time scale of eddies 
uh, in the inner layer are much much smaller than the time taken by the mean flow to change its structure appreciably in response to d p d x. You may like to think about this. I often give the example of a city and a village. A, a city uh, quickly responds to what happens in distant places. For example, Bombay would, uh, would get uh, uh, influenced by what happens in New York or London, but a village uh, say 100 kilometers outside Mumbai would be hardly influenced by what happens in the world around. I am here using an analogy so that, so that you might remember what, what we mean by insularity of the inner region and the slowness of the inner region. This assumption of local equilibrium is valid for uh, adverse as well as mildly favorable uh, DPTX, but not when real linearization is encountered at very high accelerated boundary layers. Of course, we are talking about here fairly moderate range of plus and minus pressure gradients. So, uh, highly accelerated boundary layers, uh, this uh, pressure gradient parameter nu by u infinity square d u infinity by d x would be greater than 3 into 10 to the minus 6. So, we are not talking about such highly accelerated boundary layers. We are talking about only those which are more frequently encountered having moderate plus and minus pressure gradients. We included viscosity and distance from the y simply because as I said tau wall is equal to mu d u d y therefore, uh, we must include mu and y. The density rho is included due to the importance of momentum transfer resulting from velocity fluctuations in the transition and fully turbulent layers. As I said, there are bursts of fluid which come uh, in, break down the laminar sublayer, uh, and uh, there is a burst of fluid coming out of the laminar sublayer. Uh, and this requires momentum transfer from the outer layers to inner layer of the inner layers. Therefore, density would definitely play an important role. And therefore, we have included density. So, if I were to go back uh, to this slide, so we are essentially excluded all others and only are going to concentrate on these four parameters because they define more or less the equilibrium uh, of the inner layer. So, if I were to carry out the dimensional analysis, I would find that rho u square divided by tau wall would be function of rho y square tau wall by mu square. Uh, now, I define u tau equal to under root uh, tau wall by rho. This is often called the friction velocity square root of tau wall by rho has the dimensions of velocity. I will define a dimensionless velocity u plus as u divided by u tau and y plus would be defined as y u tau divided by nu. You can see this is a kind of a Reynolds number based on distance from the wall and the friction velocity y plus. So, both u plus and y plus are dimensionless. So, you will readily recognize that this is nothing but u plus square and this is nothing but y plus square or another way of saying is u plus will be a function of y plus. And uh, at least the phenomenology suggests that this relationship will be universal and it is often called the universal law of the wall. Uh, the exact forms of f y plus we must now find out what, what the form it will take in the three layers that is the laminar sublayer, the transitional layer and the fully turbulent layer of the inner turb uh, layer. So, let us go layer by layer. To do that, you will recall that the Rand's equations for axial momentum would, would look like this. These are the convection terms, this is the pressure gradient term, this is the total shear stress and uh, there would be these terms which would arise uh, only uh, which are in, uh, which are necessary to be included uh, only when uh, highly accelerated flows are considered, but as I said we are not going to consider those. So, those terms will adopt. Also very close to the wall u is very very small in the inner layer which is about 15 percent and u by du d u du dx would be much much smaller than this quantity we 
d u by d y and therefore, this term can also be dropped. As a result, what we would get is d tau dot total divided by d y would be approximately equal to d p by d x plus rho v w d u by d y. Now, of course, v equals v w this is the inner layer uh, v w is present only here uh, this is the turbulent this is the turbulent layer uh, sorry uh, and this is the transitional layer and this is the laminar sub layer so we say that uh, u by u du by dx will be approximately zero in all this region, and v du by dy would be approximately equal to v w du by dy. Uh, these are very very approximate in the sense that v w extends in effect in the inner 15% <laughs> of the total boundary layer thickness. If I make these these assumptions, then you will see that I can non-dimensionalize this by uh, first of all I must integrate this. So tau tot would be dp dx into y plus rho v w into u, and tau tot would be equal to tau wall at uh, at y equal to zero. So in other words, this integration would result into tau tot divided by tau wall equal to one plus y divided by tau wall d p by d x plus rho v w u divided by tau wall. Now, you can see this is nothing but uh, this is tau wall divided by rho here in the denominator which is u tau square. So, I can form a v w plus which is v w over u tau and u over u tau will give me u plus. So, this v plus u plus and I will define this term as p plus phi plus in which case p plus would be defined in this fashion nu divided by rho u tau cube d p by d x and v w plus would be v w by u tau. These are the definitions. So, hold this in your mind that, uh, that uh, the ratio of shear stress uh, total stress to the shear stress at the wall is uh, 1 plus uh, pressure gradient uh, times y by tau wall and rho v w u by tau wall. So, in effect this ratio is in fact influenced by the pressure gradient as well as the effect of v w as it should be. So, now let us look at layer by layer to begin with we shall assume that d p by d x and v w are both 0 that means we are considering the case in which this is 0 and this is 0. So, tau tot would be equal to tau wall throughout the inner layer and therefore, shear stress is a constant. Now, in the laminar sub layer uh, tau tot would be equal to tau wall uh, equal to tau l and tau t the turbulent stress would be 0 and that would be equal to mu times d u by d y uh, at y equal to 0. So, integration of this would give me u into tau wall divided by mu times y plus constant, but uh, u is equal to 0 at y equal to 0 and therefore, c is equal to 0 and therefore, I get u equal to tau wall y by mu. If I multiply and divide this by rho, then you will see I will uh, I will get uh, this tau wall there by rho will become u tau squared uh, uh, into y by nu and if I take 1 u tau on this side I will get u over u tau uh, divided by u tau which is y u tau by nu in effect this is u plus is equal to uh, is equal to y plus in the laminar sub layer in the laminar sub layer u plus would be simply equal to y plus and that is what I have shown here. So, uh, u plus is equal to y plus. Now, when d p by d x is moderate the equation for d tau 
taught by d y now of course v w is still zero uh, shows there would be a little bit of y dependence there will be y dependence plus pressure gradient that term is zero so tau taught by tau wall would actually be influenced little bit by distance from the wall and therefore the second and third derivatives of u with respect to y will be nearly zero hence uh, if we expand this u plus y plus relationship in taylor series then uh, about y equal to zero then you will get u plus equal to y plus plus y plus 4 by 4 factorial d 2 u by d y plus 4 plus so on and so forth. Now, this equation shows that for small values of y plus uh, u plus equal to y plus holds which is the laminar sublayer, but at some critical distance away from the wall u plus must abruptly depart from linearity. All right. So, this is a very uh, useful little deduction that we will carry over to the next transitional layer. Now, in the transitional layer, there are no simple phenomenological arguments that one can give because both viscous and turbulent stresses are equally important in the transitional layer. There is, however, similarity between the inertial subrange of the energy spectrum and the transitional layer in that uh, if we said that if u dash is a representative velocity fluctuation, then the viscous length scale would be nu by u dash would be much, much less than delta as we have already seen. If the turbulent Reynolds number u dash delta by nu is high and a layer covering a range of values of y can therefore, be imagined in which the turbulent structure is independent of both delta the large scale as well as the viscous very very viscous length scale nu by u dash okay this is how we characterize the inertial subrange uh, as being relatively uninfluenced by either the very large scale or very very viscous scales how should du dy vary then in this region the du dy can only depend on u dash divided by y and if we for a moment say that u dash would be proportional to u tau, then d u by d y would be proportional to u tau by divided by y. And uh, if I said that uh, uh, d u by d y is proportional to uh, u tau by y, then uh, uh, I will get let us say u d u by d y uh, equal to I am going to now call kappa transition uh, u tau by y and if I were to integrate this I will get u equal to uh, uh, 1 over kappa transition u tau into ln of y plus a constant of integration which is c transition before I do that in fact, I can say that if I uh, make this d u plus multiplied by u tau and make this d y plus uh, um, multiplied by uh, because y plus is equal to uh, u tau y by nu. So, d y being changed to uh, that will become nu by u tau uh, that will equal 1 over kappa transition u tau divided by y nu by u tau, then you will see that this u tau gets cancelled with this, this gets cancelled with that and I will have essentially uh, d u plus by d y plus equal to kappa transition uh, 1 over y plus or I would get u plus equal to 1 over kappa transition ln y plus plus a constant of integration C T R. If this is the law that applies to the transition layer, then it does indeed show that there is a clear departure from u plus equal to y plus which was in the laminar sublayer and this is now in the transitional layer. And we had anticipated that there would be some distance y plus at which this transition would take place, sudden departure in the slope d u plus d y plus 
which was equal to 1 now becomes 1 over kappa transition 1 over y plus. So, there is a sudden change in the greater velocity gradient and also therefore, the velocity itself. So, the expected departure from linearity in the u plus y plus law is already attained. Now, incidentally this equation can also be recast as l n e transition y plus by k transition, where c transition would be l n e transition by k transition. This is simple. Let us turn to the fully turbulent layer. Now, we, we are, what we are looking for is the uh, u plus equal to f y plus for the uh, for the turbulent layer. Therefore, this will be 1 over u tau d u by d y equal to uh, d f by d y plus uh, into d y plus by d y or that would be equal to d f by d y plus into uh, uh, u tau by nu and therefore, you see d u by d y in the turbulent layer would be uh, u tau squared by nu d f by d y plus. Now, of course, in the fully turbulent layer uh, mu t is much, much greater than mu. So, we do not expect nu to play any significant role in uh, in the fully turbulent part of the inner layer and therefore, this expression must be independent of nu uh, and therefore, d f by d y plus must be proportional to uh, nu divided by u tau y. So, that dimensionally uh, the two sides are correct uh, or it, this is nothing but proportional to 1 over y plus. So, we and therefore, uh, uh, we get d f d u plus by d y plus as being proportional to 1 over y plus or uh, uh, this again gives u plus equal to 1 over kappa l n y plus. Now, this will be for uh, plus a constant of integration. So, the fully turbulent layer also suggests a, a logarithmic law, but the values of kappa and c may be different from those of the transitional layer. Now, let us look at the experimental data, because so far we have put up phenomenological argument. So, let us look at uh, the experimental data in which uh, we look at this parameter, which is the pressure gradient parameter delta 2 divided by u infinity d u infinity by d x. And I am looking at three pressure gra three types of uh, flows. One is the adverse pressure gradient boundary layer uh, k equal to minus 1.434 into 10 to the minus 3 k equal to 0 is the 0 pressure gradient boundary layer because u infinity would be constant and k equal to 1.44 into 10 to the minus 3 which is the favorable pressure gradient. What does this show? The experimental data are circles show 0 pressure gradient boundary layer, squares show favorable pressure gradient boundary layer and triangles show uh, adverse pressure gradient boundary layer. Now, you can see right up to 5, 10, 30 or almost let us say up to about 100, there is a complete collapse of all experimental data on u plus versus y plus, u plus versus y plus and u plus is a linear scale and y plus is a logarithmic scale. Uh, and up to about 100, you will see that uh, there is a complete universality irrespective of the pressure gradient. The favorable pressure gradient boundary layer 
data begin to depart from let us say somewhere around uh, about 300. The zero pressure gradient data seem to do quite well uh, even up to Reynolds number of uh, uh, I mean y plus of almost 700. But the adverse pressure gradient data seem to begin to depart at about 300 and the favorable pressure gradient data seem to depart say at about 150 or so from the universality. So, we can say up to about 100 the velocity profile in these coordinates u plus versus y plus is almost universal and how does it fit u plus equal to y plus it seems is valid up to y plus less than or equal to 5. This is what we identify this is y plus equal to 5 here is identified as laminar sub layer. Then there is a change in slope as you can see and that is the transitional layer up to about 30 that is given by 5 ln y plus minus 3.05. This implies that 1 over kappa transition uh, is 5 therefore, kappa transition must be 0.2 and that region extends from y to about 30, y to about 30 that we identify as the transitional layer and uh, u plus equal to 2.44 ln y plus plus 5.4 seems to apply for y plus greater than 30 and that we would say is the turbulent layer. So, the main observations are uh, for k equal to 0, 0 pressure gradient boundary layer these laws apply up to y plus equal to 700 and I have drawn these laws by the solid line that extends right till about uh, 2000 uh, y plus of 2000. For uh, favorable pressure gradient y plus of 100 seems to be the upper limit of uh, applicability whereas, again for adverse pressure gradient it seems to be about 300 y plus of 300 for pipe flow which is a very mildly uh, favorable pressure gradient which I have not shown here. In fact, the uh, experimental data show that uh, again like k equal to 0 uh, case experimental data for pipe flow would also fall uh, on the universal laws till about y plus of 700. But it is safe therefore, to say that in general irrespective of the pressure gradient that we would encounter uh, the region y plus less than 100 seems to be almost certainly universal y plus less than 100 seems to be almost certainly universal. So, we have discovered that the inner layer in the in the absence of v w, but very uh, moderate pressure gradients does actually have a reasonably uh, a reasonably uh, universal uh, structure, but the moment you exceed y plus of 100 uh, uh, the outside pressure gradient effects that is the others which we had ignored begin to play their role. The velocity profiles do depart from this universal law where that we have identified and the main changes occur only in the fully turbulent part of the inner layer. The laminar sub layer and the transitional layer are somehow completely insular. They are not affected by the pressure gradient at all uh, and the inner smaller region of the inner layer is, effect, is also up to about 100 uh, is also universal, but beyond 100 the pressure gradient effect starts playing its role. All right. So, what is this special about y plus of 100? Well, it as I I'll, as I will show shortly, it corresponds to say about 10 to 15 percent of the boundary layer thickness, and we can explain this from for a pipe flow. So, for example, in a pipe flow, f friction factor, which is tau wall divided by rho u infinity uh, uh, u bar square divided by 2 uh, is 0 0.046 uh, Reynolds raised to minus 0 0.2. So, if I take a Reynolds number of let us say 30,000 uh, then uh, what am I saying? Uh, uh, 
this relationship actually can be shown tau wall by rho is u tau square divided by u bar square into 2 is equal to 0 0.046 into u bar uh, into diameter uh, divided by nu raised to minus 0.2. If I were to define here 0 0.46 into 2 u bar by nu into r u tau by nu into nu by u tau uh, raised to minus 0 0.2, then you will see this is equal to 0 0.046 into uh, this nu bar gets cancelled with this nu bar and I have 2 times u bar by u tau uh, into r plus raised to minus 0 0.2. Uh, or uh, you will see therefore, this becomes 2 times uh, if I take this term on this side, then you will see uh, I get uh, u tau by u bar raised to 1.8 uh, 2 into u tau divided by u bar raised to 1.8 is equal to 0 0.046 into 2 raised to minus 0 0.2 into r plus raised to minus 0 0.2. All right, and what is u bar by u tau? Well, this is the friction factor. Uh, the friction factor is actually equal to, or the uh, two times u tau squared by u bar squared, and therefore u tau by u bar is actually under root of uh, f by two. So, in other words, I get here. Uh, 2 times uh, f by 2 raised to 0.9 equal to 0 0.046 2 raised to 0.2 uh, minus 0 0.2 uh, into r plus raised to minus 0 0.2 or r plus raised to minus 0 0.2 would be equal to uh, 2 raised to 1.8 divided by 0 0.046 into f by 2 raised to 0.9. And therefore, if I take now uh, Reynolds number of 30,000, then I can get the value of f from our usual uh, relationship. And therefore, I can show that r plus will be about 811. That is what I have shown here. So, r plus would be about 811. That is at the axis of the pipe from the wall r plus would be about 800, 811, whereas the inner layer where universality exists y plus is about 100. So, y plus by r plus is approximately 100 by 800 at Reynolds number of 30,000. If the Reynolds number was bigger, then this could go up to 100 by uh, 1000 even uh, or 1200 or some something like that. So, we are essentially talking about a region of, of, the, of the order of 12 percent, 15 percent region which is which defines the inner layer. All right. And the constants that we identified uh, as I show here, the constants are kappa transition will be 0.2, kappa uh, for the turbulent layer uh, from 2.44 would be 0.41 uh, and uh, C transition would be 5.4. Uh, of course, likewise E transition and E of the turbulent layer will be 0.543 and 9.512. This is just another way of writing these two. The three layer law of course, is very nice, but as we said it has very sharp discontinuities and what we would really like is to have continuous law of the wall. How do we do that? So, we seek now a continuous law of the wall rather than this three layer description, mathematical description. And, uh, and to do that, what I am going to do is uh, allow for this bursting phenomenon as well as 
effects of dp dx and bw so in analogy with stokes law for laminar shear stress tau l equal to mu du dy we introduce a model due to bosonesque as tau t equal to minus rho u prime b prime equal to mu t du dy uh, and then Prandtl suggested in analogy with how uh, laminar viscosity is defined in rho times l m v dash equal and v dash was likened to l m into d u by d y and therefore, tau t becomes rho l m square d u by d y d u by d y. This are these issues we considered in our uh, formal aspects as well, where v dash is the fluctuation responsible for transverse momentum transfer and l m is the mean eddy size in the inner layer sort of notional mean eddy size. Note that unlike mu turbulent viscosity mu t is a property of the flow whereas mu is actually the property of the fluid. So, that is the difference between mu and mu t the turbulent viscosity. Now, the second question is what how does mixing length L m vary? So, the transitional layer is characterized neither by delta nor by nu by v dash. So, the only relevant scale is y and therefore, Prandtl extended this argument to the entire region uh, in of the inner layer and proposed that L m would be kappa times y some constant that is directly proportional to y in the inner part of the layer. Now, the experimental data for the uh, measured from uh, velocity profiles of L m uh, show the this, this is y axis is L m divided by delta and this is y divided by delta and I am going from 0 to 1. Now, experimental data do show except for this little damping uh, L m is in fact quite linear till about let us say 0.18 or 0.2 let us say this is what we call the inner layer, but uh, beyond that point beyond that point the L m begins to show lots of scatter. Now, we are considering here flows uh, in adverse pressure gradient, favorable pressure gradient, zero pressure gradient. Uh, uh, as well as uh, pipe flows and uh, many other ducted flows and so on and so forth. So, this seems to be quite peculiar about mixing length that it is nearly constant uh, in the inner layer with I mean it is uh, uh, nearly linear in the inner layer say about up to about 20 percent or 15 percent and then uh, it begins to show lots of scatter about a value of 0 0.09. Mind you it is somewhat difficult to accurately measure L m in the in the outer layers because d u d y in this region is also very small you see and therefore, it becomes difficult to measure this value of L m very accurately. Now, incidentally the boundary layers with different pressure gradients as well as v w as I said have been included for the 0.2 to 0.9 region the values of show a scatter about uh, L m by delta equal to 0 0.09, but for y over delta less than 0.2 L m is nearly uh, proportional to kappa 0 0.41, 0 0.41. Uh, very close to the wall L m is somewhat lower damp than uh, suggested by L m equal to kappa y. Van Drist uh, suggested that this damping actually occurs due to due to the effects of fluctuations in the transitional layer and therefore, he said uh, he said the L m should be of, of uh, Prandtl should be modified by introducing a damping function 1 minus exponential of minus y plus by a plus and therefore, from the previous previous slide mu, mu t would therefore, be equal to rho into kappa y squared 1 minus kappa exponential of y plus by a plus whole squared d u by d y, where from experimental data it is found that a plus equal to 26 for a smooth wall will bring about the uh, amount of damping required in line with what is observed in experiments. 
mu t of course is zero at the wall because y is equal to zero there and in regions where viscosity is influential that is y plus less than 30 lm is smaller than the Prandtl's mixing length the amplitude of fluctuation decreases thus exponentially as y tends to zero and that is what we expect in a, uh, when viscosity begins to play its role in dissipation So, in order to develop continuous law of the wall, uh, tau taught by tau uh, wall, which was shown earlier to be 1 plus p plus y plus and equal to v w plus u plus, now uh, can appear in this fashion, where uh, this uh, mu t expression has been used to define tau taught divided by tau wall, and uh, this is a long expression. However, if the stress ratio is assumed to be unity, then effects of p plus and v w plus can be absorbed in a suitably defined a plus. So, what we are saying is we are going to cheat on this equation. We will say let p plus b z equal to 0 and v w plus b equal to 0. So, that tau taught by tau wall b equals exactly equal to 1 and would equal that relationship, but to account for effect of p plus and v w plus we would simply uh, uh, tune the value of a plus here uh, that is the damping constant. If you take tau taught by tau wall equal to 1, we obtain du plus by dy plus as a quadratic in du plus by dy plus and the solution is simply u plus equal to integral 0 to y plus du plus by dy plus into dy plus and the a here is given by that damping function. So, you need numerical integration to predict u plus as a function of y plus and that is what I have done here. Experimental data from different boundary layers with different d p d x and v w uh, are matched with predictions by tuning a plus in each case and Case and Crawford have proposed uh, a plus to be 25 divided by a into v w plus plus b into all this function plus 1. We will make use of this a plus later on in actual computations of friction factor and asset number, but presently just see this that uh, we do manage to predict the continuous law of the wall quite well predicts the experimental data in uh, uh, favorable pressure gradient, adverse pressure gradient as well as uh, in uh, zero pressure gradient boundary layers up to 500, 700 in zero pressure gradient up to 100 in favorable pressure gradient and up to about uh, 200 or 250 in adverse pressure gradient. And therefore, we can say that we have now found a method for calculating uh, the in universality of the in inner layer in a continuous manner. This is very useful when we, when we do friction factor in a Now, of course, the outer layers do not have any universality. They are big they are significantly influenced by the uh, by the pressure gradient and other effects uh, and therefore uh, but nonetheless efforts have been made to shortcut methods have been made to universalize uh, uh, outer layers in this fashion these are called the velocity defect law u infinity minus u u tau equal to 1 minus cos y pi over delta uh, and therefore, the total uh, total velocity function is given by this a equal to 0.55, k equal to 0.4, and c equal to 0.51. This, of course, applies only to zero pressure gradient boundary layer, but not in general. There are other methods uh, for outer layers, but I will not go into that at the moment. Uh, so, in summary, I would say that we have shown that. Although the inner layer universality can be established for a wide variety of turbulent flows, outer layer similarity is difficult to establish. For complete description of the outer layers, we need to solve the Rand's equations using turbulence models. The inner layer universality can be exploited in two ways and that is to, to derive approximate correlations for friction factor and Nusselt number and to specify wall boundary conditions for y at y plus equal to a plus when uh, outer layers are computed by Rand's equations. This achieves computational economy, but this is an aspect uh, uh, that the CFD analysts uh, essentially uh, worry about. 
Now, to prepare the ground for studying turbulence models, in the next lecture, we shall explore the likely interaction between inner and outer layers. Thank you.